Good morning, friends. It is April 25th, 2023. And what I just did, uh, what, a day or two ago? Here's my blog, April 21st. April 21st. Hey, that's that's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. She didn't quite make it to her 93rd, 94th year. April 21st, 1929. Carol Erner. Anyway, today is April 23rd, and I wanted to do kind of a follow-up. It's like, okay, Kirby, you make a good speech about why we should focus a little bit on the Bucky Fuller stuff. Like, he's got this volumes thing organized. It's kind of cool. It's kind of elementary school, right? It's kind of Montessori. It's kind of what we might want to teach maybe someday. But what about particle physics? Like, where does he explain about neutrinos in a co coherent manner? I think this is one of the criticisms. And it goes back to when he started writing Nine Chains to the Moon. And it had like a science-y feel to it. He wanted to write in the area of STEM. You could say he was a STEMite. S-T-E-M-I-T-E. -E, STEMite. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEM. So here we are back at a page where I'm talking about general systems theory. So I'm like, in his footsteps, you could say, I like to sound technical. And people are like, well, what about Einstein? What does he think of your stuff? It's like, how can you talk that way? Why do you get to be a STEMite, Bucky? What does Einstein think? And so that was early in his career, right? Uh, he was getting that kind of pushback. Because people are looking for authority figures. You can tell them to think for themselves, but they just want to know who said that and should they believe them? Because are they a high enough authority? Like, who said I should think for myself? Who said that, you know? I don't know if, if like, guru so-and-so thought that. Maybe it's dangerous to think for yourself. So, that we, you know, what did Einstein think, you know, of you, Bucky? And I think that's the general question a lot of people get around Bucky is because he talks about gravity and radiation. Like he starts synergetics talking alloys. He's like, I'm going to hybridize these metals together and they're going to be stronger as a sum of their parts than they would be individually, whatever. And obviously to me in the humanities, I'm reading it all metaphorically. And he's like saying this synergetics here is going to be like a new metal a different way of compacting information that's going to be tensilely extremely strong. It's like, I would say it's all tautologies. You know what those are, right? From uh, philosophy, once you make your own private language, but it's not really that private, right? It's like a black hole that leaks. And so you read synergetics. Clearly, this is a guy immersed in his own private language, but we're not completely excluded and he's not crazy. By conventional definitions, he flies his own airplanes, he invents a car, he invents a house. He's like super duper productive, and so everyone calls him a failure, right? Because it's been one giant smear since he died. It's like, well, this guy's total subversive. We got to paint him out of here quick. And I'm not kidding, because he gets into financial stuff. The last place you want some kind of amateur just dabbling around. Right, so here's my fee fi fo fum chapter. Plus, he's he's like he's kind of an authority figure. Not just does Einstein say he's okay, leave this guy alone. It's not that they ever got to meet again. It's very politically sensitive when you're a genius, right? Because everybody's like, oh no, you know they think they have to judge that right before they do any genius stuff. It's like well they got to figure out anyway. It's very spectator. Everybody's a spectator. Right, And so here this guy writes Utopia or Oblivion, and he puts it in our face, and he works with the military and the CIA and stuff. I mean, like if you look, or OSS, whatever, if you look at his later teachings, like when he's doing um, World Game, we had the benefit of Madar Gabel from the uh, World Game Institute, from World Game, the... Um, the organization, they used to do workshops in the UN and stuff like that. It was um, therapeutic in a way, what they were doing. It was a workshop, and it had a psychological dimension to it. But anyway, what he was talking about, oops, I'm going through my 
Flickr here. I, look, I really like taking pictures, by the way. And I have kind of a public in mind, so when I take my pictures for Flickr, I'm thinking about, you know, chronicling a life, like scrapbooking the way Fuller did, his chronophile and stuff. But I realize there's anyone in the world can look at these pictures, so I take that, I take that into account, you could say. And uh, that's my dog sneezing in the background. I think my dog overate. I left the lid off the food. Speaking of dogs, there she is. And this is a montage. Leela Vam here. She's in Kathmandu and has started doing a series, uh, The Sleeping Dogs of Kathmandu. And I just put uh, my dog in there. I, I mix in Portland stuff. And this is something I found on Twitter or LinkedIn the other day, which I thought was cool. I kind of use my Flickr the way a lot of people use pinned, int pinned interest, is it called, which I also have. But I, Flickr, I have unlimited storage if, as long as the bill is paid and all that. So anyway, back to uh, the albums here. Let's just go to when when we Trim Tab Book Club, right? Let's just, you know, his attitude, Fuller's attitude, it's like you're the young people coming up next. Here's a way of organizing some thinking about geometry. It's like, get your thoughts in order as you face forward and see if you can conjure a good future, right? Don't just be reacting and backing into the future like it's somebody else's um, possibilities. These were your possibilities. This was your time to shine. So let's equip you with all the best tools and toys that we can think of so that when I'm not here to show you anything, you've already got, you know, I gave you a good a good boost. That's, I think, the general sense of an adult. I'm not saying this is like, oh, Bucky. It's like, no, everybody thinks like this. They want the next generation to have a running start. Otherwise, what's civilization about and how would it accumulate? But Bucky was dabbling in everybody's business He's talking about banking, stocks and bonds. He sounds like he might be an Einstein. He's got the Stemite stuff going. And so he's a dangerous figure, and it's hard to assess him. And that's kind of more in the ballpark is where I'm at when I say, let's teach about this guy to kids. It's not because he has the holy grail particle physics answer to the neutrino issue. You know, like, let's just say there is one, and he's got to, like, we can't teach Bucky until somebody cracks the synergetics nut and finds uh, the answer to our physics problems. Until that day, you know, we just put this stuff on the shelf because, you know, if it's not physics, if it's not about the standard model, if it's not a theory of everything, why do we care? And yet Fuller very upfront says there's no simultaneous concept of the whole universe where you can just, like, Close your eyes and look at your navel and see, based on some model you have, the whole universe at once conceptually. The closest he ever got was like a sphere and use that to, to introduce Descartes' deficit and how 720 also shows up with the tetrahedron and so on. So he is doing philosophy. He's putting in order the facts of experience. That's what he says he's doing. Is that science? He says Eddington said it. Who, when, to him? I mean, he did meet a lot of people. You know, sometimes in the bio, Alex's bio, it's like, well, there's no cited source for this. Well, you know, sometimes there isn't, right? He just, like, he, he hung out with Toynbee a lot, right? He knew a lot of famous people is what I'm saying. And that's another reason to teach him his, his life in ordinary education because he's like your entree to like Ezra Pound. And Ezra Pound's a complex figure, right? Not everyone knows he got caged because he was on the wrong side in the war. He came on the radio in Italy and said all kinds of offensive stuff. And I'm not defending what he said. I don't really know what he said. I've tried to listen to a few of his garbled radio messages, but that was all a long time ago. I'm not one here to relitigate like World War II. I wasn't here for that. I'm not that focused on all of that. But I am focused on Fuller's living through all that and going back to the 1800s when he was born. And so throw him in as a guy who knew a lot of people. 
So a jumping off point, right? And the fact that he thought there was enough to go around is all we need to make his story compelling. In other words, he studied about Malthus and everything, and he came to the conclusion, I'm about to get back to my thread regarding world game, which I'm scrolling through here, but he thought we did have enough to go around. So it only makes sense that we would, you know, take him at his word that he believed what he thought he believed. And then once he committed to, okay, in principle, we have enough resources for everybody, what we're missing is like the intelligence part, the humanity part. You know, we need some more artifacts. We need to continue existing trends. What are the trends? Which trends, if I continue them, are going to give us the most bang for the buck? And it's not a theory of everything. You kind of dismiss that early is what I'm saying, as the Holy Grail. It's like, why are you looking for that? I don't think there is such a thing. Non-simultaneously conceptual eternally regenerative universe you know he's basically even if he's wrong and his whole definition of universe should be thrown out for him it was working i'd say again as a tautology synergetics was his alloy where he's got tensile strength in his mind and he's very confident he'll tell you because and i think i understand because being from philosophy that's how it is. You have to change what you say less and less, he said, because your tautologies all intercohere and pull in on each other and the gravitational uh, effect, you could call it, right, metaphysically, psychologically, it all comes together. The dots connect. You know what I'm talking about. It doesn't always happen. It's an epiphany, right? We have this epiphany. And I think synergetics is an ongoing uh, epiphany that Fuller was having. And whether it's wrong or not, it fits into the pantheon of American writers. That's what I'm saying here. We're on the humanities side, right? We are not necessarily Stemites, even if we sound like we are. At least I wouldn't be, because I kind of mock, you know, the what's ons and the, the, the theory of everything that you think you have to have. When what if staring you in the face is all the resources you need? You just have to be smart about it. But you're not smart about it because you're thinking about neutrinos and how am I going to have a career impressing people, right? How am I going to be the smart guy in the room? Fuller's dead and gone. I want to be the star. So there's a lot of copying Fuller. Oh, you got to come up with a new map. Let me do that. Or, oh, I know. They think you're smart if you... Uh, I don't know. It's just there's a lot of aping going on. And that's where I think artificial intelligence comes into it. It's the perfect mirror for the ape aspects of our thinking, meaning the automatic aspects of our thinking, meaning the robotic aspects of our thinking. That's what's mirrored back to us in artificial intelligence. Very useful. We do need reflex conditioning, and I think that's what artificial intelligence is here to do for us. Just like library science, real easy to jump back through the card catalog and find that book and stuff, right? We need fast retrieval. And that's what Synergetics is helping you with, too. It's a memory palace. It's mnemonics. I use that word throughout this channel. I often bring it up on the screen. It's a way to organize your head, right? Have some uh, retrieval capabilities. And you're saying, well, I don't want to learn that all from, like, Bucky or something. Like he was a beer drinker and stuff like that. And I'm saying, fine, right? Just come up with, have um, a metaphysics of your own if you don't want to use synergetics. But we've got a good running start for you here. And uh, don't wait for them to decide. In other words, now that you know everyone around you is hung up on superstitious beliefs about particle physics and think that's somehow in between us teaching Bucky and uh, you, we got to prove we have a theory of everything. Realize that's all superstitious nonsense thought by brains for jello types. You don't need to listen to them, right? Just get on with doing your homework and tune out the nincompoops. Not that hard. Have a beer. Have a beer on me. Actually, I'm, I'm off beer for now. This is a brewery in Alabama called Trim Tab. Learn your heritage. It's fun. There's a lot to know. But there's a lot of people who will discourage you because, 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 right? And don't necessarily have any good reasons. Just because. Ha! Well, question authority. Talk to you soon.